You know, it's a great pleasure for me to announce now the Senator of Finances of Berlin, Matthias Kollatz Ahnen. He brings us the greetings from the city of Berlin, the city which of, of his own history was always living between peace and war. It has many, many signs of war, but also many, many hopes of peace. So, Matthias Kollas Ahn, thank you for coming tonight. You are heavily welcome to join us and to bring us the greetings of the city of Berlin. Good evening, Mr. Baun, dear President, dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I start with a quote. The city is completely dead. One drives miles on miles of deserted ruins and finds nothing livable. This sounds like a present-day description of Aleppo, but this is a statement of Air Marshal Arthur Tedder when he arrived in Berlin in May 1945 to accept the unconditional surrender of Germany. He continued, Berlin can never be rebuilt. He continued this in the face of 70 million of cubic meters of rubble. And, again a quote, Berlin as a city is completely destroyed. The ruins of Berlin should be preserved as a modern Babylon or Carthago as a monument of Prussian militarism and the horrors of the Nazi regime. End of the quote. Things happen differently, as you have seen today. The Berlin of today, where I have the honor of welcoming you, has little in common with the desert of ash and rubble. Michael, Michael Blumenthal, foreign policy advisor to Kennedy and founder of the Jewish Museum in Berlin, describes today's Berlin as a lighthouse, a cosmopolitan city, and one of the most desirable ones in the world. So, this rise from the rubbles to metropolis was by no means inevitable. For years, Berlin lived and was rebuilt under the shadow of a looming Cold War. Two superpowers were just in the width of a street apart. And I, living in Berlin for more than 10 years, was a, was a witness of it. A former German chancellor called tactical nu nuclear weapons just a further development of the artillery. Plans were made up for the day of the Cold War become a hot war. The US military in the 50s selected 91 targets in the eastern Berlin become ground zeros, the blasting grounds of nuclear bombs more devastating than the Hiroshima bomb. The capital of Eastern Germany was to be destroyed systematically according to these plans. Other plans in the East existed at the same time for Western Berlin. So Ber we are, if you so want, the lucky survivors of this. Berlin did not share the fate of Carthago. It wasn't erased from the surface of the earth after its third war because this third war didn't happen. This was due to the strong popular movement, to the movement of people like you and many others also in this country, Germany, against nuclear war and also some political wisdom and also from time to time some luck. And it was due to statesmen able to overcome the cruel logic of nuclear deterrence, like former mayor of Berlin, Willy Brandt, and of Mr. Gorbachev, due to speak to you during this conference in a, in a video message, I think. But the end of the Cold War was not the end of history. Peace did not materialize to the extent people hoped. Yes, there was a peace dividend, as we call it. I think, as I read it in your documents, you call it the reallocation of military expenditure as a part of the Great Transformation. Germany took a lot of profit of it. 
Many military sites were closed. Many soldiers were moved back home. The German armed forces on both sides, east and west, were significantly reduced. And this allowed to a lot of better development and, if you so want, of um, also development in a civilized way. But there was no end of wars. To the contrary, the Cold War, with its small wars around the globe, was replaced by many hot wars worldwide and in Europe as well. In the last years, this has not calmed down. So and I think one of the topics of this conference is that there are also some fears about the future and some concerns. And also it's time to discuss about action against these concerns. We in Germany are very much concerned about the incorporation of the Crimea into Russia against the will of the Ukraine. And as a twin brother of war, terrorism rose as a threat, also taking place in the midst of Europe, to some extent in Germany, but to a much bigger extent in our neighborhood countries as Belgium and France. In Berlin, the victims, victims of those war, wars and violence stranded. In the 19s, we had the last big wave of migration in Europe, mainly from the former Republic of Yugoslavia, moving to Berlin and to other cities in Germany. Today, today we have another refugee movement which had a peak of refugees arriving in Germany with 50,000 people in Berlin and 1 million all over Germany from Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq and example given also Nigeria. They try to find shelter in our country, they try to find shelter in our city and we want to offer people who flee from war and terror a new home. As president of the Technical University was, was saying, all institutions in our city try to play its role. The Technical University in incorporating those who want to become students and um, to, to go to the university, and others are incorporated now in kindergartens, schools, and also it has started now also into the workforce. Berlin has undergone a lot of solidarity in it, its history. The elders in our city still remember it, blockade, the division of the city, reunion, always we could count on the solidarity of others. Today, the time is there, has come to give something back. Peace is more necessary than ever in times like this. But we have also to see that a dark side of this refugee wave which has arrived in Germany is going, and not only through Germany, but also through the Western world. We have a discussion and in our population and people are divided about what to do in the future. And this is also a part of the discussion which could take place also in this conference. You are discussing also about what could be done with a reallocation of money if disarmament takes place. If there were, as a kind of a thought experiment, if there was no defense budget in Germany and the money was distributed to the federal states, Berlin would receive 1.7 billion euro per year. This would be not bad, huh? So, and we could do a lot of... Um, um, of integration measures and also of construction for a, growing, um, for a growing city. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many cities where the need for peace is evident. Berlin, as I tried to point out, out of our history is one of them. But a lot of others as well, um, former Leningrad, Warsaw, Sarajevo, Nagasaki and regrettably many others. These cities experienced that war is not the father of all things. War and violence is costly and 
the father of misery, of human misery. Peace, on the contrary, is a mother of welfare and human development, as it was shown in the introductory remarks. But peace, peace needs a movement. Peace is nothing that simply happens. Peace must be made. And you are an important international part of this movement. In the program, you find the German we DW a supporter of the conference. I am personally a member of this Vereinigung Deutscher Wissenschaftler. But I am here tonight as a Senator of Finance of Berlin to welcome you on behalf of the governing mayor and the government of Berlin. Welcome and peace may be with you. I am proud that you chose Berlin as a place of your conference. I wish you the best for the proceedings and I hope as well as courage in times of fear and violence. Thank you very much. Matthias Kollatz Aden, thank you so much for these welcome greetings of the city and underlining the role of the international peace movement.